Hey guys, thanks for subscribing to my channel and thanks for your love and support. If you are new to this channel, then please go ahead and smash the subscribe button to get new videos on information security. So in today's video, we are going to talk about one of the issue that has been found by Deepin Jitia on Facebook platform. So Facebook is running one of the white hat programs since long, I think 2003 or sometime. So what is Facebook white hat program basically is if you are finding any security vulnerability in facebook.com then you can or Facebook uh, website then you can go ahead and submit them to their white hat program. They will evaluate it and then based on the criticality of the issue they will reward you with some bounty rewards. So Bipin Jitia has found one of the SSRF for server side request forgery issue in Facebook subdomain. So we are going to talk about that issue in details during our analysis part. So to begin with let's understand what is SSRF. So SSRF or server side request forgery is an attack in which the attacker basically utilizes the web application to perform internal network scanning. Right? So attacker basically interact with the web parameter uh, to perform the internal network scan. So how this attack works, there is one website where we have a chat box or where we can provide a URL something like that to load an image or something. So in that particular chat box what you do, you type xyz.com and see what is the image it is loading. So let's say in Facebook chat box uh, if you provide a URL xyz.com the preview of the metadata basically populate inside the chat box. Now being an attacker what you can do is instead of uh, enumerating like HTTP service or the website you have provided which will be in HTTP colon double slash xyz.com you change the uh, port number to 21 or 22 and that we enumerate. So we're going to have a in-depth demo when we see uh, in the demo section uh, how we can identify the SSRF issue how you can exploit it. So let's understand what Bipin Jitia has done. So first what he has done is basically he has uh, figured out one of the subdomain of Facebook. So there are multiple ways you can basically enumerate a subdomain uh, so using tools like sublister uh, probably going back to the DNS and enumerating. So I'll make a separate video on it like how you can enumerate a subdomain very easily uh, which will be really helpful for a bug hunter because typically you will get a high or critical bug inside the subdomain rather than the main uh, domain of a particular website. So please watch this video till the end to understand SSRF attack. Again it is going to be very useful in if you are appearing in a cyber security interview because the interviewer gone those days where the interviewer are asking you about stored XSS or reflected XSS. Now these days interviewer are more of asking about do you know about SSRF attack, do you know how do you uh, enumerate the subdomains, uh, do you know how to uh, compromise uh, a subdomain by using subdomain takeover bug or uh, do you know like what is the difference between SSRF and LFI what all things that you can do with SSRF and different kind of questions. So to get all this answer and to understand this bug please watch this video till the end. What Vipin Jitia has done is he enumerated one of the subdomain of Facebook and then he figured out that subdomain is running micro strategy and then he go back to Google and read all the documents which are associated with micro strategy and figure out what are the web UI or web client or web URL end. So one of the web URL end, end is task ID where you can basically enumerate the task or something kind of functionality. So you start fudging for the parameter to enumerate different information that you can get. So once figuring out the URL he has basically figured in SSRF issue or server side request forgery issue and then he has gone ahead and further uh, exploited it and make it a bug bounty rewards worth 31,000 USD. So let's jump into the demo part and understand what is SSRF, how do you identify an SSRF attack and also how do you exploit it then. Then we will jump into the issue that is founded by Bipin Tin and analyze and see okay, how. So let's understand what is server side request for Jerry. So I'll put this link in the description if you want to read it later. So the overview section says like the attacker can abuse functionality on the server to read or update internal resources. So attacker will be utilizing web application to read the server files or internal resources. The attacker can supply or modify a URL which the code running on the server will read or submit data to and by carefully selecting the URLs. The attacker may be able to read server configuration such as AWS data connect to internal services uh, like HTTP enables database or other things. So it's not only about that. So attacker can basically uh, go ahead and provide some malicious payload with some different protocol also. Let's say go for or FTP or file protocol 
and then he can basically read the local file from the server over here they have explained with an aws metadata but uh, there could be more say the attacker want to see the or uh, read the local file then he can just provide the url equal to let's say file colon etc slash password and get see the uh, etc password file so it depends on the attacker potential basically what all payload he can provide and read the file from the server so if you want to understand this attack better in graphically i guess wasp has not provided any graphical description but netsworker people has made a nice explanation uh, with a small image so if you could see this is our attacker over here and what the attacker is doing like attacker cannot directly talk to the internal system of a particular organization or the internal system which is running behind the firewall or something like that so what the attacker basically do is attacker sends a payload uh, to the web server or the web application url via the web application url and then the web server will talk to the internal network or internal uh, whatever server which are running so the web server make a request on behalf of the user to the internal system or internal server and then respond back to the web server and finally web server return the same whatever information it has collected to the attacker so this way attacker can basically utilize the web application to perform internal network scan as we talked earlier so what are the impact of server side request forgery well there could be many impact depend on the scenario where it is running but the first and foremost like it is possible to scan port and ip addresses i would also say like it is possible to enumerate whatever services those are running and interact with some protocol such as go for which allow you to make further discovery not only go for like ftp and other thing which you will see in the next section like while going for different payloads then uh, it's like discover the ip address of the servers running behind a reverse proxy even a firewall you can discover it using the ssrf attack you can also perform remote code execution uh, using the ssrf attack so these are the different impact that you can do uh, via ssrf preventing ssrf so we'll talk about this in the end of this video to give you better idea so if you see the vulnerability classification and severity table again it depends on the scenario but usually this is a high or critical bug depends on up to what extent the attacker can basically compromise so i have taken an example of one of the poc so over here you can see the card url where you can supply a url so what the user is doing is he just providing a sony.com url with 80 port open and checking for the preview so you could see that it says like page has successfully and because the port 80 was open on this particular domain now if you are changing the port to let's say port number 443 which is kind of filter port then you see that fail to fetch the page due to con connection refuse so it is one of the filter port that's why since the server is uh, requesting on the behalf of the user it is giving the response right now if you change the port to uh, let's say 9999 or any unknown port or let's say there is uh, that port is closed or something like that then it says internal server error so based on different observation side whether a particular port is open or closed so this way uh, you can basically go ahead and test for ssrf next i will show you what are the payloads that you can use so i'll be using this particular github link which i will give you in the description so payload of all the thing is a nice collection of all the kind of payload so if i scroll down uh, then i would see the server side request for jerry right so if i open it then it says me what are the different payloads that can be used scroll down you can see that to uh, payloads with local host so if you are uh, the basic one typically uh, opening a particular port or whether you want to check whether a port is open or how the server is behaving uh, based on different port then you can usually go for this local host kind of thing uh, where you specify a change the port and see the response uh, there is also different methods that can be used like if you have different port like smtp ssh as we talked earlier now there are some with uh, domain redirection also if you are having burp uh, collaborator which is available in burp pro version then it will be really easy for you to test uh, for this SSRF vulnerability. You can also perform bypass localhost with CIDR and using decimal IP location. Probably you have seen some of the bug bounty report where uh, typically people use this decimal IP location uh, to bypass the filter those are being used. So these are some of the examples I will suggest you to go through all of this link. I think there is one more nice one like bypass against a weak parser. You should read this. There was one more by okay this is 
SSR exploitation by URL scheme, so which I was talking about some time ago, like retrieving the etc password file. Uh, again, the over, here also there is a nice small example uh, you can refer for understanding the attack. You can also use DICT URL and TFTP LDAP go for. So there is one more by Namshek basically. I think I want to show you that, which is a really good one. Yeah. So SSR exploiting PDF files. So this is one of the nice way you should watch this video. Uh, it is a nice explanation how you can uh, basically make SSRF done from like requesting a P PDF file or reading a PDF file. Also, uh, this is a nice one like SSRF to XSS where he has basically uh, provided some of the payload that can be used to test uh, whether you can make a simple XSS or not out of a single out of a simple SSRF attack. Uh, you have also like SSRF URL for cloud instance, uh, like SSRF URL for AWS bucket and all those things. So depending on the kind of scenario you are in, you can basically pick in a payload and then start attacking and performing the SSRF attack. Again, I would also suggest you to open this particular URL, uh, scanme.nmap.org. Uh, you can basically utilize this website which I typically use some time during bug bounty time so you can specify port number 21 uh, the normal http right and let's say i'm saying the right payload is like http colon double slash 22 and then you will also see like so typically you first start with this thing like how the application is behaving and then you start changing with port number 22 21 for filter port and open port and see how your server is responding right you can also change the different payload so like two nine something like that and see whether uh, which particular response you are getting so the based on the response that you see from the server you decide whether a particular server is vulnerable to ssrf attack or not so now let's jump into the issue that has been founded by bpin and analyze it so this is the url basically i will share in the description box that you can go through so he has invested a lot of time to find out this vulnerability so let's go ahead and read them one by one. So first thing he did is he figured out one of the subdomain of the facebook.com and then started attacking it. So as, as I said, I will be making a separate video on subdomain enumeration with uh, different tools. So you can see he has enumerated one of the URL uh, where it is running this MSTR web mean, right? Which means it is running some of the micro strategy uh, application. So if you open it or Google about it, you could see that it relates to your micro strategy, right? So what he did basically, he has gone ahead and searched for whether it is actually using micro strategy or not. So once he figured out that it is using a micro strategy URL structure SDK, uh, he has gone ahead and opened their documentation, whatever that is publicly available and read some of the information where he could see there are two different URL which are uh, used in micro strategy application or SDK utilizing application. So then he tried to open both the, the, the URL uh, by adding this parameter, whatever the URL path followed by just by changing the name to the facebook.com. And then he noticed that this particular URL uh, needs some uh, basic authentication, wherein uh, this particular doesn't require any authentication, right? So then next part he has to do is like fudge for a parameter value for this task proc value need and see what all information he can gather. So he has started fudging with burp intruder, I guess. And then he was not able to find anything. Then next what he did basically is he downloaded a microstrategy SDK, uh, which was a bunch of jar file and then started to decompile them uh, with JDGUI, one of the tool for uh, decompiling and notice some of the uh, perform basically a source code review to see if anywhere he can perform any attack post which he noticed that there is a place where he can uh, allow domain is tinyurl.com. So then he started using the same tinyurl.com to create a payload and basically utilizing the burp collaborator. I guess he was having the pro version where he utilized this burp collaborator to create a tiny URL and then using the same uh, uh, URL like the, the facebook.com URL as you can see here over here. He has replaced the tiny URL whatever he has generated using burp collaborator. Then he was able to get some response which confirmed that there is SSRF attack which is existing. So utilizing this same hint, I guess he further went down for performing a more complicated attack uh, like uh, uh, try to access the portal where there is the basic authentication was enabled 
and he gone ahead and reported this issue to facebook but facebook said okay uh, this, this is not a security issue something like that right but uh, this is how it, this happens in bug bounty you trace you say something which is issue but sometimes the team or reviewer team doesn't evaluate it properly and say this is a false positive but then he didn't give up uh, he started digging further using different payloads with the different protocol like url scheme like file ftp go for and all those things right and finally he was able to make uh, some of the accesses like as we seen earlier like some of the brute logic accesses payload that can be used he also started using to make it an uh, phishing page uh, with the help of ssrf and retrieve the credentials in his domain whenever someone is hitting for the credential so this way he went further down for finger pitting all the internal network and figured out that lightray is one of the application where it is running so it is like lightray fb lightray metric agent is one of the application and then he reported this issue facebook said okay this is cool and uh, we consider this as an issue but the story didn't end here but basically it begins so what next he did basically is uh, he again look into this sdk whichever he has downloaded initially and start looking further performing more uh, code review kind of stuff then he figure out few more parameter where he can perform the same similar kind of ssrf attack so i will not go through in details uh, you can read them uh, with your own time to understand it better and uh, that way he was still able to make more ssrf this was one of the blind based kind of ssrf attack which he mentioned earlier or which he has mentioned here clearly so you can read further he was able to enumerate more and more by chaining this information disclosure issue also uh, to make it a critical issue so what he did he basically combined these two issue blind ssrf and servers uh, inside information leakage and made it a full proof issue which facebook was uh, not ready to accept initially uh, he again further analysis kept on analyzing all those different uh, packages classes and seeing what all parameter that could be vulnerable to ssrf attack and other thing so he went ahead with the further analysis and finally after a lot of struggle he was able to uh, make a rewards of 30000 us dollar as an bounty from facebook not the end basically he also reported the same issue to micro strategy people i guess and they also rewarded him with some bounty amount of 500 usd so again the conclusion is like uh, i would say he didn't give up he kept on struggling he kept on fighting for the bug and finally he able to get a good reward for it i think also he has written a very nice poc write up for this particular issue uh, very nicely done uh, probably this will help a lot of other people to see like what are the different struggle behind getting a uh, bug and also fighting with the team for or the reviewer team for making it an issue and get Future. a monetary reward i hope you like this video hit like and subscribe for more videos in constant security in this channel i'm going to put more content related to constant security